here we go. What's up warriors? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, please like, share and subscribe. Today's video is the first of our top 10 series and we are starting with the female warriors. That's right guys, we are counting down the top 10 female warriors in history. So this one's for you ladies. Here we go. Starting at number 10, Artemisia. The 5th century Turkish queen was appropriately named after the goddess of the hunt. Artemisia was queen of Halicarnassus in modern day Turkey, but is remembered in history for commanding the Persian naval fleet during their invasion of ancient Greece. That's right guys, it's the warrior queen Eva Green in 300 Rise of the Empire. Now Artemisia really made her mark in the Battle of Salamis. Even Greek historians wrote of her heroics during the battle, painting a picture of a ruthless warrior who is decisive and incredibly intelligent in his strategies, willing to do anything to defeat her enemy. With a Greek ship bearing down on her, Artemisia intentionally turned her ship onto one of her own, sinking it in the process, convincing the Greeks that she was one of them. And it worked. She escaped her enemies, avoiding almost certain capture. Despite being a fearless warrior, legend has it Artemisia fell in love with a boy who didn't love her back. But unable to deal with the heartache, she leapt from a rock that is said to break the bonds of love. Instead, however, this fearsome warrior broke her neck and died in the name of love. What a load of bullshit. Number nine, Lozen. Lozen was a 19th century Native American warrior from the Apache tribe. In the 1870s, the Apache tribe were pushed into a reservation nicknamed Hell's 40 Acres, due to its terrible conditions. But in 1877, legendary Apache leaders Geronimo and Victorio, Lozen's brother, led a rebellion striking fear into the hearts of settlers in New Mexico's Black Mountain. During these raids, Lozen would take pity on the women and children, leading them to safety across the Rio Grande. Victorio, her brother, is quoted as saying, Lozen is my right hand strong as a man, braver than most, and cunning in strategy. Lozen is a shield to her people. Unfortunately, though, she couldn't be a shield when her brother needed her most. As Lozen guided a new mother and baby back to the reservation, her brother died in battle. Devastated by the loss, Lozen led a vengeful rampage across New Mexico. She fought alongside Geronimo until 1886, when attempts to negotiate peace led to her surrender. Lozen died of tuberculosis as a prisoner of war in Florida. An unfortunate death for such an honourable and fearsome warrior. Number eight, Zenobia. After the assassination of her husband and stepson, Zenobia became ruler of Palmyrene, modern day Syria, in 267 AD. Within just a couple of years of her crowning, she was already battling back Roman advances and expanding her territory by force, invading Egypt and Anatolia. Zenobia was known to lead by example, walking miles and miles in step with her soldiers. Under her rule, the Palmyrenians captured Roman trade routes. However, the Romans responded by laying siege. Zenobia's reign was fierce but short, and her defeat was celebrated in Rome in the year 274. When bound in golden chains, Zenobia was marched through the city as part of a military parade, though she remains to this day a patriotic symbol in Syria. Number seven, Fuhau. Lady Fuhau 
Hao was one of Emperor Wu Ding's 60 wives during ancient China's Shang Dynasty, but went against tradition by serving as a military general as well as a high priestess. According to inscriptions, Fu Hao led many military campaigns, commanding an army of 13,000 soldiers and was even considered to be the most powerful military leader of her time. Not much more is known about Fu Hao as her military accomplishments predate paper. However, her tomb gives us an insight to her success. She was buried with 130 weapons, 27 knives, thousands of jewels and ornaments, 16 human sacrifices, six dogs, and four tigers. If that doesn't say a strong independent woman, then I don't know what does. Number six, Nakano Takeko. One of the few known female samurai and the first on our list. The Keko was educated in martial arts before gaining notoriety in the Boshin War. During the Battle of Aizu in 1868, she and other women who chose to fight were not recognised as an official part of the Aizu army. But did that stop her? Not a chance. Takeko led the fearsome females in a unit that was later dubbed Joshitai, the women's army. Though formidable warriors, the rebellion was destined to fail. While others around them surrendered, the Joshitai did not. The women fought on even as the gates of Aizu closed, trapping them on the battlefield. Takeko fought fearlessly, but was shot in the chest. Knowing she was about to die, she asked her fellow warrior, her sister, to cut off her head because she didn't want it to become a trophy for her enemies. Her sister did as she was asked and escaped the battlefield with Takeko's head, burying it under a pine tree at a nearby temple, where it remains to this day. What a woman. Number five, Tomoe Gozen. The most famous female samurai, however, predated Takeko by about 700 years, and her name was Tomoe Gozen. Gozen was a title of respect bestowed upon her by her master, Shogun Minamoto no Yoshinaka. She fought alongside male samurai in the Genpei War, which lasted from 1180 to 1185. In 1182, she led only 300 samurai in a battle against 2,000 enemies from the Taira clan and won. While women fighting amongst men was highly unusual, Yoshinaka's high esteem for Tomoe and her fighting skills overcame prejudice. Tomoe was Yoshinaka's champion. According to tradition, before a battle, a warrior from either side would fight to the death one on one, taking their enemy's head as proof of their victory. Tomoe was always first to be called upon by Yoshinaka and delivered so many heads that she became so well respected that she was even considered to be the first general of Japan. However, her success could not last forever. Yoshinaka was eventually defeated in battle and with only a handful of soldiers left, he begged Tomoe to flee the battlefield as he would be ashamed to die next to a woman. Tomoe retreated and retired her sword before marrying and living out the rest of her days boringly ever after. All jokes aside though, what an incredibly inspiring woman. Number four, True Teaching. Just before we get started, I'm not really sure how to pronounce this, so if you know, please let me know in the comments. And sorry if I'm doing it wrong. So at 20 years old, True, aka Lady True or Bar True, raised a following of over a thousand and urged her fellow Vietnamese to rebel against the Chinese forces that sought to conquer their homeland in the third century. When pressed by her family to drop the rebellion, she was quoted as saying, why should I bow my head, stoop over and be a slave? Why should I resign myself to menial housework? You go girl. She left her family and joined the army, cutting a grand figure on the battlefield, carrying two swords, wearing a bright yellow robe and riding a war elephant. After liberating her territory and tasting victory 30 times, she eventually lost the war 
and is believed to have committed suicide at 23. Despite the dark end, her legacy lives on. Stories of her suggest that her voice rang as loud as a temple bell, she was nine foot tall, and her breasts were three foot long. Imagine the back pain, girls. These tall tales speak to the incredible presence of this young woman, who inspired the Vietnamese people for nearly 2,000 years. Heroic. Number three, Grace O'Malley. Grace O'Malley was a 16th century warrior and Irish pirate queen, also known as Gronya Moyle, a nickname derived from a tale of teenage rebellion. When her mother refused to let Grace set sail with her father, suggesting her hair was so long it would get tangled in the ropes, Grace promptly sheared off her locks and set sail. She ruled over the O'Malley Kingdom of Ireland and became chieftain of the clan after her father using the tribe's boats for piracy. Grace and her crew would board vessels that dared to come too close to her shores or ships, taking tax for passage and slaughtering anyone who refused. She was said to be so fearsome that even on the day after birthing her child upon the ship, she took up arms to defend it, scolding her men. Yet Grace's greatest battle was a war of words against Queen Elizabeth I. At a time when the chieftain's power was being usurped by the English, Grace sailed to England to negotiate the release of her brother and sons, and was able to agree to stop supporting the Irish rebels in exchange for the removal of the English Bingham, who was responsible for the capture of Grace's family. But above all, Elizabeth granted Grace permission to, and I quote, fight in our quarrel with all the world. The two didn't remain friends for long, however. Bingham was reinstated in Ireland and O'Malley went on to fight the English in the Nine Year War. But from one Celt to another, who the hell likes the English? Hey! Two, Joan of Arc. By the age of 17, Joan of Arc played a key role in commanding the French army. Her visions of the Archangel Michael drove her to approach Charles VII's army. With the Lord behind her, she offered her assistance to help expel the occupying English. Initially mocked by the French soldiers, she stood tall and eventually was taken seriously when her influence ended the siege of Orleans. She continued commanding the French army, excelling strategically. However, the Burgundians, Frenchmen from Burgundy, loyal to England, soon led to her demise. She was captured in 1430 and despite several escape attempts and rescue efforts, Joan was put on trial by the English for heresy and cross-dressing. Once convicted, she was sentenced to death and burned alive at the stake. Even after her death, her strategies are said to have influenced the French battle model. More than 25 years later, the Catholic Church revisited Joan's trial for heresy, overturning the charges against her. And years later, Pope Benedict XV declared Joan a saint. Not bad for a little girl. And number one, Boudicca. Boudicca was a queen, but it was widowhood that made her a warrior. She was wife to the king of the Celtic tribe Iceni, whose will demanded that his kingdom be split between his daughters and the Roman emperor. However, Rome wouldn't recognise his daughter's right to inherit the kingdom, so upon his death, they invaded. Boudicca was tortured and their daughters stripped and abused by the Roman soldiers. But Boudicca would not be beaten down. Instead, she raised an army. She united the British Isles and with a hundred thousand Celts at her command, Boudicca waged a war. She toppled the Roman capital Camelodium, modern day Colchester, and then rode her troops down to Londinium, London and Verulamium, St Albans, devastating cities and slaughtering nearly a hundred thousand of her enemies. Her victories were so emphatic they forced the Roman Emperor to even consider pulling out of Britain completely. Unfortunately, however, the tide turned and Boudicca's army was defeated. And what became of her after that, nobody knows. As there are no records of her capture, it is believed she either died of an illness or suicide. But 
Despite her unfortunate end, she goes down in history as a mighty warrior queen and the fiercest female fighter of all time. So that's it guys. That's our top 10 female warriors. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to like, share and subscribe. We enjoyed making this video so much that we've decided to create a series dedicated to incredible women. We're gonna be looking in depth at some of the names we've mentioned today, as well as amazing women who changed history. So if you like the sound of that, make sure you subscribe to the channel with notifications on so you'll be the first to know when we upload. Warriors, thank you again, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.